Good morning. Welcome to today's webinar. Our webinar today is focused on technology's role in food safety culture. Our presenter this morning is Andrew Thorne, Traction's business develop developer. It's a real treat to have Andrew here with, today with us. He brings eight years of SaaS software as a service sales experience, working with the software food and beverage with the food and beverage industry. Since 2015, Andrew has spoken to hundreds of companies across the food industry to relate his extensive product knowledge to operationalize their complex business problems, helping them accomplish more with their data than they thought possible. When Andrew isn't spending his time in the field, he's talking and talking with industry customers, you might find him outside cooking, grilling with his family and playing baseball with his boys. On that note, Andrew, I'll hand the mic over to you so you can get this started. Great, thanks Jennifer. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today and thanks for your kind introduction. I'm thrilled to talk about some issues that I see happening throughout our food industry today and to share a few stories from other key voices that I've had a chance to speak with. Food safety culture really is a big deal and this is a great way for our audience, our viewers, our listeners to hear some real examples how to put food safety culture into practice and probably enhance what they have or simply confirm what they have in place today to make sure that it lines up. A little bit about traction as we get started. Traction customers from the time I typically start talking with them struggle with quickly identifying risk across their supply chain into one unified place, rendering them a little bit more susceptible to safety and quality breaches and even tracing ingredients to pull for a recall situation. Traction's risk solutions are used by restaurants and grocery retailers who oversee 15,000 locations in 90 countries and rely on Traction to operationalize food safety, thus reducing the risk in their food chain, their regional markets, and their retail stores. How we're able to do this is through our fully integrated software suite that's connecting millions of transactional events from suppliers, products, and retail site checklists that paints a 360 degree panoramic and shared view. I wanna begin with a slide that most of our audience is familiar with coming from the FDA. Frank Giannis, the FDA Deputy Commissioner and also responsible for Food Policy and Response, is our leader today, and he has a new era of food safety, and it is upon us. And technology will play a key role for all members of the food chain to deliver. One of Frank's more popular quotes is around food safety culture, and it really resonates with me because it's exactly what I hear in the field time and time again, that Food safety culture is foundational to any food safety plan. He often says, we can write the best policies in the world, but they're meaningless if we can't get people to follow them. So there again, food safety culture is foundational to any plan. As I'm talking to companies in this space, I'd like to just summarize why this matters into two key points. One is around accountability. Senior leadership teams are committed to food safety. Two big areas that I want to dig into here on this is number one, leading by example. Individuals, they are paying attention to the practices, to the behaviors and values of their leaders. They see their leaders taking no shortcuts, no exceptions. The second aspect of accountability is leaders must see their data to benchmark the results against their goals and to take action. Actions can be as simple as praising high achievement or following through when stated goals or performance or behaviors are less than the mark. The second big key point here is around the financial risks. Claims and weather, they're driving business insurance premiums up right now. And there's a couple of ideas I want to dig in here as well. Number one, without having a strong food safety culture, we're missing the data points. The data points are key to being a part of a food safety plan. 
The reason why is it could be too risky to move to a high deductible policy without them. Again, this is where we spend our time to save our company from avoiding paying more if we could just demonstrate that we do have these data points in place. The second financial risk and part I want to dig into is around historical data. Historical data is an additional key data point that can assist the insurance brokers when it comes to pricing their plans. Proving and practicing food safety, product quality, supplier sourcing information, and that it's an automated and digitized fashion can really be a valuable asset. What these two things are saying to me is do what you say, say what you do, and prove it. This is critical to win in today's market climate. Now, what makes this difficult? Everyone wants to do this. However, it's difficult to operationalize because not one size fits all. We all have seen this in the field today. A few key points to hit this home on why, what makes this so difficult. First, there's different product categories with unique regulatory and quality standards. The clients I talk to sell across multiple product categories. Could be food, beverages, alcohol, fuel, and tobacco. It's not possible for a human to catch all the red flags across these products with a very different regulatory practice and quality standards. Second, I see there is being a big shift into food service in order to fill revenue gaps created in shifting customer preferences. This is what I mean about this. Convenience stores and grocery retailers, they're now serving packaged goods, which require them to become a food safety expert that follows food safety practices and implement food safety programs. Simply put, most of the retailers might be seeing less sales in tobacco and are now identifying food service as an excellent opportunity to fill the revenue gaps moving forward. When we're thinking about this, that brings the next point, private label brands, and we've all seen them. But they require retailers to become food safety experts and responsible for ingredient tracking, allergens, claim validations such as kosher, halal, organic, non-GMO, all things customers want to see from the products and the prepared goods that they're eating today. Next, historically, food safety has always been quality assurance's responsibility. However, products, they go to market based on decisions that are coming from outside of this group. Everyone involved in the go-to-market process must share responsibility in order to deliver safe, high-quality, sustainable products to their customers today in this environment. Next, there's a variable workforce. Some reasons around this are high employee churn and finding new hires is definitely on the minds of most of the retailers and restaurant operators out there. Seasonal and part-time workers uh, are often new, they're coming and going, it makes things really difficult when there's new or revised policies, and it just makes it another layer of com complexity to preparing and to having upcoming audits and inspections that go well, or as planned as the policies want. Last is measuring. The leaders I see that have the best outcomes have the ability to measure and to evaluate what is working versus what is not. We all have a lot of great ideas. I know I do too that I'm sharing in the market. And what we want to see though is what did our old uh, policy have? How is it working? And now with the new policy, how is it working? Is it working better than, about the same, or is it, are there introducing other risks we didn't think of? So these are all things that are on the minds of the leaders that I'm talking with today. 
now that we've kind of set up a context for what's happening in our current environment, let's dig into our best practice guide to get us started in terms of structure and a practice of food safety culture. I want to introduce the GFSI dimensions. GFSI defines food safety cultures as shared values and beliefs and norms that affect mindset and behavior toward food safety in, across, and throughout an organization. A food safety culture is not one size fits all proposition. Making it a reality means that throughout the organization, food safety has been defined for each member and departments in terms and expected expectations that are relevant and that are clear for them. So here's a few guiding questions for each of the dimensions. Let's start with vision and mission. How do your senior leaders engage with food safety? How is your messaging used to communicate food safety expectations for all employees? Consistency. How does what you measure influence your food safety culture? Is your documentation designed to support your employees' food safety decisions and behaviors? People. When was your last food safety training? What did you learn? And to what level are people committed and acting in accordance with your company's food safety expectations? Adaptability. Can your employees articulate your company's food safety expectations? How are they applying these guidelines to each decision? Lastly, hazards and risk awareness. How do you recognize actual and potential hazards at all levels and functions involved in your food chain? How do you educate employees to understand why the hazard and risk management controls in their areas are so important? I caught up with a number of food safety leaders from a few different sectors, and I wanted to share those conversations with you. I spoke with Walmart, Qdoba, and EG America. Walmart, each week, more than 275 million customers and members visit their 11,300 stores and e-commerce websites under 58 banners in 27 countries. For Qdoba, they're a popular fast casual Mexican restaurant with 700 plus locations. In EG America, focusing on Cumberland Farms, has 600 stores in eight states and employ over 6,000 people. In the interest of time, I wanna focus on a few of the areas today. Number one is consistency. This is where the conversation I had with Qdoba was centered on. Technology has added real-time data collection into their culture above and beyond their established culture of third-party audits and internal mock audits. To support this, they believe definitely senior leadership buy-in and accountability are a must and critical to their success. Also, food safety focus is not just in the store, it's also in the supply chain because it's taking pressure off of the store team members so they can focus on customers. Next, I wanted to align hazards with Walmart. They offered me a great story when I was speaking with the food safety subject matter expert. And he shared with me this story that would connect to a response that sounds something like, we all expect if we were the customer, we would want to see something like this. The story goes, imagine you're working at the, at the location and you're preparing of some food. And as you're preparing some food, you some, you're alone and isolated uh, working uh, with the food and all of a sudden a few customers are coming to the register looking to check out. Well, the customer experience I think we'd all like to see in this is if we heard from the associate, hi customers, I see you there. I'm working on a little bit of prepared food right now and I will be right with you. I just need to wash my hands first and I will be right 
there. That's a fantastic example of what I heard uh, Walmart would see with their uh, food safety culture. They're all about managing the experience with food safety and their customers. Also, some keys to the success from a food safety culture perspective have been messaging. They make sure that it's clear, simple to understand, and consistently reinforced across digital, video, and printed internal communications. Next is the quote in the conversation that I had with EG America associated to adaptability. They have a, quite a unique environment that they're working in. In their environment with over 600 locations, they have fuel, tobacco, and food that's being prepared on site. And the food that is being prepared sometimes is prepared in multiple different ways. So it's a very unique uh, set of characteristics also in a highly regulated environment. Sometimes they're a food manufacturer. Uh, they're also dealing with food, and their operation is open mostly 24-7. Some aspects of their culture really speak to adaptability. Uh, they need training, and the, they need training that's both informal training courses supplemented with constant reminders. This has been a really good way for their culture to, to be more responsive and adaptable, and that's why I chose them to this associated GFSI dimension. Next, I want to describe and articulate a little bit about how technology is an enabler for the GFSI and the strong food safety culture. In my mind, there's several capabilities that enable this and they align exactly to the outcomes we want to see delivered. A little bit about each of these capabilities, we talked about this earlier in our conversation today, is measurement and benchmarking the behaviors and the principles that we have. Having a technology to share the process that's bringing together and unifying several different functions when we're thinking about a private label that, that we have in our food preparation and our, and our product, uh, there's a number of aspects of your organization that are coming together. It could be from R&D, procurement, quality. Um, they all need to be aligned so that product can get on the shelf and serve to your customer quickly and on time. And another capability that technology can enable is having automation and scale. There are, as I described earlier, millions of transactional data points out there. Having automation and visibility at scale will really improve your ability to say what you do, do what you say, and prove it. And I think another important aspect to the story here from a technology point of view is using validated data that you can trust. The story that I think really resonates with senior leadership today is um, getting this information into an ERP system. Very advantageous and, and really an asset, using data that you can trust so that it can be also utilized in the broader ERP environments. And to do that well, validated data is key. So that leads us to the outcomes that are delivered. We want to be able to tell our stakeholders internally and externally, these are the practices that we do. We can prove how we are doing them, and we can demonstrate that the right behaviors are in place in our culture uh, all along the way. So these are some really key outcomes and some capabilities I think to really key on uh, that technology can certainly help with. Wrapping things up, how can Traction help you digitalize, digitally transform your food safety operations? We have quite a large scope uh, that we can help our customers with. Uh, they span across products, suppliers, and sites. 
I'd be happy to have a conversation with you at a later time uh, to talk about any and all of those capabilities. And in closing, I wanted to recap what we and summarize what we've talked about today. Number one, start with GFSI food safety culture dimensions. Number two, one size does not fit all. Depending on your organization and your culture, start with the right dimensions for your company to have success right out of the gate and keep progressing on them with additional dimensions described by GFSI. Next, data is king. Connected data really can be a corporate asset. When we were talking about um, the risks and the accountability and the finance, I think that having a connected data set will really turn your organization uh, to have a corporate asset of using their data to support uh, the rising costs of insurance premiums uh, and really all aspects throughout your connected business. Finally, weaving technology-enabled process into the fabric of your culture and then to tap into that collected data to validate the return on investment. Uh, this really speaks to this having a strong food safety culture associated with the GFSI dimensions that we were talking about. And you can see how there's so many variables and variations that can be weaved across not just one aspect of your organization, but multiple departments, whether we're talking about at your individual whether we're talking about your products and the specifications, and then when we're talking about the sourcing and your supply chain. It's fantastic to be able to describe and articulate a lot of what I learned in the field and a lot of the aspects of, that I'm talking about in, uh, with our customers today. Thank you. Fantastic. This is great information, Andrew. Thank you for sharing your expertise with our audience. Um, I have one question. The, in reference to GFSI dimensions, one of the dimensions is people, and that's a big, important part to the success of a company. So in the conversations you had with those in the industry, what were some insights that our audience can take away about this people dimension? You know, that's a great point, Jennifer. Uh, yes, each of the companies have recognition programs that are aligned for the people dimension uh, within GFSI. Uh, recognition programs are rewarding and recognizing teams, uh, and that is also happening across uh, each of the organizations and companies that I spoke with, uh, not just for our presentation today, but across the board. Um, so yes, having a strong uh, culture of recognizing your people uh, is important, and I want to let you know and everybody out there that it, it is happening, it does happen, it is a part of culture, and um, it's there for a very good reason, because it's another great example of how it's supporting your food safety culture. It's a great question. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that. Well, that concludes our webinar for today. I want to thank both Andrew <coughs> excuse me, and our audience for joining us, taking time out of your day to join us for this webinar. You can learn about future webinars that Traction will hold in the near future on Traction.com, which is our corporate website, the company website. We look forward to connecting with you again. We look forward to sharing more about our technology suite with you and how it can help you automate, um, operationalize, and weave uh, food safety culture into your organization through digital transformation. Thank you again for your time. Have a great day.